What's going on, y'all? It's Philly Celeb, and you tapped into Popcorn Matinee, the Popcorn Conversations, the number one podcast for independent filmmakers in the independent film community. Today's guest comes all the way from the UK, Andre Harrison, the writer and director of the new sci-fi thriller, Project Summer. We sit down and talk about how he filmed it through the pandemic, how he didn't let nothing stop him, how he got people together just to make his first feature-length film. This is definitely a conversation you don't want to miss. All my creatives, tap in. They hate you when they see you got that cloak. They love it when you're six feet in that hole. Give you flowers when you can't feel it no more. They bring roses when you can't smell them no more. They hate you when they see you got that glow. They love it when you're six feet in that hole. Give you flowers when you can't feel it no more. They bring roses when you can't smell them no more. Oh, they love you when you die. <laughs> so, so where exactly are you from? Uh, I'm based in London at the moment. Um, and at the moment, we're having uh, like a heat wave. So I think it's like 40 degrees yesterday or something like this. But yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's quite hot now for, 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 the, for, for London in the UK. So it's, it's nice. Oh, no, we're dealing with that here, too. In the U.S., I'm in Philly. It's, a, it's almost 100 oh, really? degrees. Yeah, it's super oh, wow. hot. Oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah, it's scorching. So is that where you grew up at? Is that where you're from? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, born and bred, uh, London, U.K. Like, I have some family in the U.S., um, in Florida and in Texas, but, um, yeah, I was born born here. Okay. Um, what made you want to become a filmmaker? Um, I just love films, man. I just love, uh, yeah, I just love movies. I love telling stories. Um, I'm a musician as well, so I, I, was, I was doing music. Actually, I was into films before I was into music, and then when I left school, I got more into music. Um, and I was in a, a couple of like metal bands and was touring around Europe and stuff. So that kind of, uh, was my focus in my early twenties. And then when that kind of died down, um, yeah, I got back into filmmaking, um, maybe five years ago, I think. Um, and yeah, I just love, love telling stories and, uh, yeah, the characters and, uh, you know, every, a whole crew getting together to tell a story, I think is a really beautiful thing. If it works. Yes, yes, definitely a beautiful thing. So, like, what what movies, like, inspired you to even make movies? Um, uh, good question. I would, uh, what movies inspired me to make movies? Um, I said my top five films probably are the ones that, that inspired me, I suppose. I mean, it has to be right if they're your top five. Um, so I would say, for me, films like uh, The Matrix, I loved, it was a great film that I remember seeing that at a cinema and I was underage and I managed to get in with my dad and watching it and it just kind of blew my mind. Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, when I was a kid as well, I remember watching like uh, Beauty and the Beast and Lion King and Toy Story and stuff like this. Um, really cool stories, you know. Um, and then stories that have a message as well, like Malcolm X and Do the Right Things. Like, um, yeah, stories like that, that kind of, sorry, films like that, where the story kind of makes you emotionally involved. Um, so I think movies like this kind of made me want to tell stories and make films, um, not just to entertain, but to kind of make people think a little bit as well. Yeah, I could see all of that, like uh, everything that you just mentioned, I could see all that meshed up into like Project Summer, like bits and pieces of that, like the things that you mentioned that, that you like in films from certain films. I could see that. I could see the inspiration oh, in, in that film, Project Summer. Oh, nice. And you said you were you're you were a musician. What made you start? You know what what got you into music? We can we can go there real quick. Yeah, of course, of course. Um, uh, I was really big when I was a kid. I was really big into Michael Jackson. Um, like I really like Michael Jackson like a lot. Um, and I I yeah, so I think probably from him. <laughs> if I'm being completely honest with you, I think it was probably Michael Jackson that kind of that kind of. Uh, that was my, when I remember listening to like say songs like Dirty Diana and stuff like this, and I love the guitars, I love the the melodies and stuff, and I actually love just his voice and his presence and stuff like this. And yeah, I kind of wanted to obviously not replicate, but kind of that was like a like wow, you know, this guy can do all this stuff. And then I got into like uh, I was kind of listening to like electronic and hip hop when I was really young, 
and then and then a band Linkin Park came out and they kind of merged the two. Like they merged like the hip hop with the the metal, and then so I kind of thought, oh, this is this is new, and then I got more into metal side of things, and that's how I got into yeah joining a band and doing the music stuff. What was the name of your band? Uh, the band at the time was called Black Despair. Black um, Despair, okay. Black Despair, yeah. Um, and it was a band. Uh, so I met. So the guitarist is from Japan, and he lives in Japan now. Um, a guy called Takuya Yada. Um, please do look him up. He's an amazing guy, super talented. Um, and he think he runs his own radio show in Japan now as well. Um, but yeah, so just me and him, uh, we was doing that for a good good few years. But obviously, because of visas and stuff like this, like we weren't weren't uh, making enough money to declare that he could stay in the UK so it kind of broke down but um it was unfortunate but that's that's the life I suppose yeah maybe one day y'all can make like a, a documentary or a film about this your band I, I'll yeah, watch it that'd be so. dope <laughs> what, what did you do in your band like as far as uh it, it, in that band I was doing vocals I was singing okay 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 yeah yeah now, yeah. is any of the music that you made in Project Summer? Say again, sorry? Uh, is any of the music that you made in Project Summer? Did you do any music for Project Summer? I heard that the soundtrack, the music was different. I liked it. I was wondering, yeah, like... Yeah, like, yeah, yeah like, like, the soundtrack is all me. Um, so, 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 well, so, 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 The Black Despair was when I was young, and I have a new project now called Aeronova, which is... Um, it's a bit like it's metal elements, but it has like a, it's more like electronic synth wave, dark synth vibe, and um, and I think that's what you can kind of hear in Project Summer. Like the synth is, for me, is very reminiscent of like the '80s horror kind of. Well, that's what I'm trying to do anyway. Um, and, uh, and my drummer, who's also in Aeronova, he does there's certain scenes in the film um, where there's a character called Amsterdam who talks about the pandemic and stuff like this. Uh, and my drummer done the music to these sections. Um, so yeah, I, I wrote the soundtrack and my drummer done the, the soundtrack to those those little sections for Amsterdam because they're meant to be very separate to the story. It was either part of the whole story, but when you watch it as a viewer, it, it's meant to kind of take you away for like a minute or a minute 30 seconds that it's on for. Yes, Amsterdam is the character with the paint on, right? Exactly, yeah, yeah, okay. that guy. Yeah. Okay, I don't want to spoil too much. I want them to, to check it out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so you said you started your filmmaking. Re, you restarted your filmmaking journey. Excuse me, five years ago. What, what, yeah. what made you just want to restart and jump back in the film? Um, I think, I think it was. Uh, yeah, well, the music was done. I, as far as I was like, like, concerned, um, I wouldn't get the opportunities that I got from music again that I had back then. Um, so, yeah, and I kind of had like a period where i was yeah kind of not floating but just like okay what am i gonna do now if you know what i mean um and then uh yeah i remember that i loved film you know i loved acting when i was younger um so yeah so then i was like you know let me let me try this filmmaking thing again um so i started uh reading a few books took a few classes um not for filmmaking, more for just certain aspects of filmmaking. So a couple of classes for writing, um, and a couple of classes for, uh, what did I take again? And then I think one was like directing actors or something like this. Um, and then, yeah. And then after a year of that, I just like, I bought like a really small camera, I think it was a Canon 6D. Um, and I made it, yeah. So I was just filming, like I made a couple of short films, uh, I think they were in 2018 and then. Yeah, it's kept them going from there, to be fair. Okay. And so was this your first feature-length film? Full-length film? Yes, yeah. Yeah, first feature-length. Oh, yeah. Congratulations on it. Congratulations on it. So... Ah, uh, cheers. Thank you. Take me back, though. You said you used to act when you was a kid, too? When you was a child, you used to, you had fun doing that? Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah, no, it was really good. Really good. Like, I, I loved... Um, yeah, it was more like stage acting. But, yeah, no, I, I love... It's a love... I mean, that's why I was the, sing the singer and loved to be on stage um, with the band. But yeah, no, it was, it was more like uh, uh, acting for stage. Um, but yeah, and I enjoyed like characterization and stories and narrative, you know, and trying to break down a character so it relates to you. All this kind of mental stuff I loved with acting. Um, 
yeah, so kind of getting the opportunity to work with actors and especially on summer, which is very different. When you, so when you do a feature film, it's a completely different process to a short film, I felt. Um, so yeah, it was, it was nice to do this and see actors, you know, get into their head spaces, et cetera. And yeah. Okay. So real quick, what's the, like, what's the difference to you between, be, uh, between being a stage actor and just acting on film? What's, what's the biggest differences? Uh, I would say with stage acting, you can't, you don't have cut, you know, you, no one's going to say, okay, cut, let's do that again. Like, um, I won't swear, but yeah, if, if you, if you mess up, like you can't go back and say, oh no, you're going to kind of do that again. Like you, it's not, yeah, you can't do that. <laughs> um, so there's a pressure on you to kind of not be perfect. Cause I don't believe in perfection, but there's a, there's a, there's a pressure on you to kind of, if something happens, you need to kind of keep on rolling with it. Whereas with film, you're gifted with, gives you the camera. Now you can press stop and then start again. Um, so I think that's the biggest difference. Maybe the only difference to be fair, because I think the preparation for, for film and, and stage is the same, like mentally in, in terms of understanding your character, et cetera, is the same, but definitely in terms of filming, um, yeah, uh, you have the, you have the luxury of being able to stop. Whereas when you're on stage, you can't stop. You have to keep on going. So everyone has to kind of be on point, you know? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you start, you did stage acting as a, as a kid. How, as a child, how did you get into that as a child? Was that something that you wanted to do or like, how did that happen? Yeah, I think it's the same way with, with the, the filmmaking. Um, I just loved, I, I like the idea of acting. Um, yeah, when I was a kid, I was watching films and stuff and then getting the opportunity to go it, in, in, in school over here, like you have to do drama. Um, it's part of your GCSEs, which, which is like from when you're, uh, from when you're 12 to 16, I think. Um, yeah, so when, when you're like 12 to 16, so it's part of your curriculum, so you have to do it. Um, and then, I, yeah, when I kind of was the first year, I was like, this is one of the things that I quite like a lot. And then when I left school, um, it was something that I kind of continued. And then, um, yeah, it was just, I just loved it because I just loved like, getting into it because obviously understanding it through school and then watching movies and I was like, oh, wow, I remember watching, you know, like films you do when you grow up, like, so I, I grew up, I would say I grew up in the 90s. I think that was when I was watching more films. It's like actors like Wesley Snipes or um, Nicolas Cage or whatever, like, I remember watching those movies in the late 90s and be like, oh, wow, this is so cool. Like, or even like, like, like Bad Boys, for example. Mm -hmm. um, and then watching, watching movies like this, and like, oh, well, I could do that, you know, <laughs> kind of thing. Um, like, I remember the scene where, at the end of, well, towards the end of Bad Boys, where, uh, yeah, so probably if I get his, his name wrong, but that the main actress, like Tia Leone, I think her name was, where she gets kidnapped, and then Will Smith's running on a bridge, and then Big Martin Lawrence is in the about to get run over, and Will Smith, like, grabs him off the road or all that stuff. And we're watching that, we're like, wow, that's so cool. I could, I, you know, I want to get into that. And how do I do that? And obviously yeah. act, acting there. <laughs> um, <laughs> so yeah, that's kind of how I got into, got into acting. Okay. Now you mentioned in school that's part of your curriculum. That's dope because we don't we don't do that here in the U.S. Like we don't have we don't oh, even really? have art. Yeah, a lot of schools don't even have like any type of art. But that's that's y'all have oh, wow. acting as a curriculum. Yeah, yeah, like well, yeah, you have to you have to do it it's, uh, until I'm sure. I mean, I know things change because my son is. He started in secondary secondary school is like uh, uh, maybe high school I think in the US um, and he's so he had to do it for his first two years but I, I believe after the third year you don't it's like a choice um, study so you don't have to do it if you don't want to replace it with something else okay. um, but for the first two years yeah you have to do drama you have to do like theater drama studies. What's good, my fellow creators? I need y'all to do me one solid. I need you to like, subscribe, follow, and even share this on your Instagram story. And it, it don't take nothing but a quick little button. Your support will help continue this platform to grow and is very appreciated. Back to the conversation. That's interesting. Like, do you know why you why you are required to do that? Um, I think because we're all, we're all like proud of Shakespeare. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. <laughs> all right. That, that makes sense. But yeah, yeah, no, it's uh but I think it's good. Like I think if if 
it kind of teaches you a bit like yeah uh, for me acting was a good way of kind of stepping outside Andre as a person and taking on someone else's uh stress um and I think in a in a subconscious way maybe it it, um, it helps you yeah when you're like so for, so for us year seven and eight would be um 12 to 14 okay. or 12 to, yeah 12 to 14 I think and I think at that age you know you're quite you know not in touch with your emotions and stuff like this so um I think acting yeah theater and drama studies kind of helps with that so I suppose that's why why it's there to keep your like creativity kind of flowing um maybe yeah Okay, that's in, that's real interesting. I wish they had that over in the U.S. That'd that'd be they should, good. They should, man. <laughs> yeah. Now you you said you shot Project Summer. Did you shoot that with the Canon? You shot that with a Canon? No, that that, that was with a Black Magic um, 4K cinema. Oh yes, that's I'm a fan of the Black Magic. Only thing I don't like is that the batteries die a little too fast. But shoot, I have I... <laughs> shoot super quick, man. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think it was going for like six a day. It was ridiculous. That they need a ring to <laughs> need to sort that out. Because yeah, like it's, it's a great camera. I love it. But the, um, you said the batteries. Uh, yeah, it's not. Yeah, it's not great. So, uh, how many days did it take for you to shoot that shoot Black Summer? Um, I think it was about twenty four days, maybe. Twenty. Uh, but it wasn't like consecutive. It wasn't like for like yeah, twenty four days every day. It was. I think we we started at the end of April and it was um, maybe four or five days a month. Um, I was lucky because the, the, the lead guy, Aviomi, he lives quite close to where I am. So all the shots where it was just him, um, we kind of, yeah, he was very flexible and very like um, easy to get a hold of. Um, so yeah, whenever he was free, he would always just come down and we was filming in my apartment anyway. Um, so whenever he was free, he'd come down and we'd, we'd get all of his shots. Uh, so maybe it's technically it's probably more than 24 days, but in terms of actually filming with everybody, it was about 24 days, I believe. Okay. And you filmed this movie during COVID, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, uh, yeah, so, we was in lock- so he was in lockdown in 20, yeah. So from 2021, we was in lockdown January to May, I think, 2021. And we started filming at the end of April, 2021. So what what was it like uh, filming during COVID? What was that like? Um, I'll be honest, and when I say this, like, it's, it's, this is just coming out of my mouth, so it's got no affiliation for anyone who worked on the film. Um, but when when we when we was filming, obviously everyone's very skeptical because we don't know what was going to... We had rules in terms of what you can do, what you can't do during lockdown. Um, but after, I think the first or second day, you know, it became very apparent that for us to make a film, we have to, yeah, we have to touch each other, you know? Like, I can't direct someone if I can't be within, I think there's like two meters these distances you can't be in with with uh, other people during lockdown. But I was like, look, mate, this, this isn't going to work. So we... We agreed that look, we need to be close in within quickly. We agreed we need to be within close proximity. So um, once that was established and we was all okay with being around each other, um, it was relatively easy because it was super quiet because we were still in lockdown. Um, and as far as I aware, we weren't breaking any laws, um, and everyone was super, you know, their own free will of being there and happy to be within close proximity. So it was actually a lot easier than I thought it would be. Okay. What was, what was like the most difficult? That was was that like the most difficult thing? Just having to abide by the rules over there. I think so. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we came out of lockdown. I think yeah, in May, in May or beginning of June. Um. So when that happened, obviously we was more free. But by that time, the most of the films, most of the film that was shot indoors was done anyway. Um. And then yeah, at the end we just started for it. And then after June we started filming the outdoor scenes, but obviously we wasn't in lockdown, so it wasn't such a big, yeah, big, big deal. But the, the, uh, the hardest, yeah, I'm, not, uh, I'm, not, I'm trying to explain it, but not without um, ruining it for people who haven't seen it, but there's a scene where um, the lead actor is carrying um, a lady down the street. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if you remember that scene. Uh, it's, it's, your name's Kadir, right? Yes. 
Yeah, of course. Yeah, so let me remember that scene for this. It says that the scene where where yeah, Miles was carrying Tammy down the street, um, and because we was literally just at a lockdown, the road ahead was really busy. Yeah. Um, and we were filming. I think it was like seven o'clock in the morning or something like this. People were just literally getting out of their beds and stuff like this. And then, um, so yeah, he was walking down this road, and it started raining. And I was like, so I was worried about the cameras, but further, further down people were starting to go and leave for work. And I think because of where I was filming, they didn't see me. So obviously they left their houses at seven o'clock in the morning to go to work. And they see this guy carrying this girl covered in blood, walking down the street. <laughs> <laughs> and mate, it was so funny. People were coming to the house, was like running towards him going, are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay? So we had to keep on stopping it. <laughs> Stop and starting it. Like, no, we're just filming, we're just filming. It's all good. Um, I think that was the hardest. <laughs> that was the hardest scene. It was funny as well, but it was the, that was the hardest scene to do. Now, now that you say that, now all right, some places in the U.S. you need a permit to actually film. Do you need that over yeah. there in the U.K. or no? Oh yes, yeah, yeah, you do, you do. Yeah, we had we had the permits for that and everything for this one. Um, but it was relatively easy to get because everyone was still in lockdown when we asked for it, so it was fine. Okay. Um, yeah, but, but yeah, so but it was just that, just. It was more the the aspect of yeah filming publicly again, and everyone's still being very hesitant as to how close they can approach people. And um, yeah, and then obviously I imagine yeah if, if I had walked out my house and saw some guy carrying a woman covered in blood <laughs> down yeah. my road, I'm so- I don't know if I would yeah I've been like oh should I help him or should I you know am I giving COVID? I'm surprised they didn't call the police on you. No. <laughs> No, I'm pretty sure someone would have done. I think someone would have done eventually. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, yeah, I think so. So, so how did you go about casting your actors for this film, Project Summer? Um, a lot of them I knew before. Uh, probably some, yeah, a lot of them I knew before. Um, so I was uh, the Project Summer came about because I was going to do another film called Madison, okay. um, which got funding. It was like a sci-fi kind of story, uh, very different to Project Summer. And I had already cast the majority of the film. Um, but because of COVID, it lost funding. Um, and then a lot, a lot of the actors I still kept in contact with were keeping up, keeping them updated, et cetera. And then, uh, yeah, I think when I lost Project Madison, well, Madison, sorry, um, I started to write Project Summer, something that I know I could do without anyone's external influence. Um, so I just yeah, messaged the guys and girls that I that I had already on my contacts that I could I know I could use for the film. Oh, sorry, not use, but you know I know they'd be interested mm-hmm. uh, in a character. A character. Um, yeah, and that's kind of how it how it went down. So why did you name the the film Project Summer? Um, it was originally going to be called uh, To Bury the Dead During the Summer of 2020, um, but I think that was a bit too harsh maybe and it was a bit too i think it'd be, it is it, a bit harder to sell um and i think it was a bit too like yeah it's just harder to sell with that kind of title um and it doesn't leave you for much room for growth like say sequels or whatever um because obviously you established that it's 2020 um so i thought for me product summer is better because it kind of feels like a project as well um and yeah, it's got a nice like ring to it. It's quick, it's short, it's easy to sell. It looks good on looks good on the film. It's good when you, easier to tell when you tell people at meetings and stuff. So um, yeah, I think that's why why I went with that one. But there's no affiliation for Project Summer. It's just I had to think of a name. No, <laughs> so, like, <laughs> so what what inspired you to uh, write Project Summer? Um, it, was lo- it was losing ma- medicine, to be completely honest with you. Um, it was losing the film Medicine, which I really loved. I loved that script. I loved the the, the story. Um, yeah, I loved the film. Um, so I think the script, yeah, probably someone kind of came out of anger and frustration of the pandemic and um, lots of things that was going on at the time, but all of them were down to the pandemic, to be completely honest with you, um, which is why I think Project Summer has that pandemic in the background of the story. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. But I think everything happens for a reason as well, because I really like Project Summer, um, and it stemmed from that situation, and it's doing quite well um, as it is now. So, 
yeah so yeah that's just why it's why i decided to write you know kind of like uh like even when the chips are down kind of thing you can still create like i knew what i had i knew what i had to use i had access to so i just had to write a story around what i had access to um and i kind of refused to kind of because someone said no that meant no i was like okay cool well i'm gonna <laughs> i'm gonna make a film anyway and then um yeah and then product summer kind of came into fruition but i want to say hats off to the actors as well because they they were given very short time to learn especially abiyemi was given very short time to learn um everything because i told them that medicine was not happening in february and i sent them summer in march and then we were filming summer in april so they yeah hats off to them to be to yeah, they, fair. Like they 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 were taught. they were intense they did great they yeah, did great. Sure, yeah yeah they did yeah. great now was there a budget for the film um the budget i would say yeah there, there was a little bit of budget like i put a lot of my own money into it and um, i also have a lot of my own equipment as well and I also had the locations. Um, so and uh, locations and equipment is where most of the budget goes. No? So um, when you have that, it kind of eliminates a lot of the the budget. And obviously the actors, I and mean, a lot of the actors worked for pretty much for, for free. I think they were doing mostly expenses. Um, yeah, most of them were doing expenses. So uh, yeah, in terms of budget, everyone kind of took a bit of a, yeah, a bit of a. Uh, how do I say? It? Yeah, so uh, yeah, they, they took a bit of a um, a hit, I suppose. But then, on the flip side, during COVID, no one was doing anything, so it was good for them to have a project to kind of hold on to, um, and to focus on during those times. Okay. Now, how how long did it take you to write a uh, project summary? I think I read it in about two or three weeks. <laughs> to completely honest, I read it. I think okay. I read the most, the main part in two or three weeks, but. Um, during filming, because of the actors and watching them act, watching them interact, I was also writing odd scenes. So, for example, the scenes with Miles's Miles's partner Tammy, who plays by Emily. Um, it's always played by Emily Alicesto. Um, she wasn't as big in it as she is in the film. A lot of her scenes um, were written whilst we were filming. Um, so I would say the main arc of the story was written within about three weeks. So literally, as soon as I lost medicine, I think I gave myself a week to to cry or, or whatever. And then, um, yeah, and then I started writing Summer. Um, so the main arc of Summer was written within three weeks. But to be honest, even as, as we were filming, I was adding scenes and chopping scenes. So um, again, like kudos to the actors because they, they were able to adapt. Like, you know, like we'd film next week and i'll be telling them on the week before oh by the way i've changed a few things in the scene please learn these these lines again you know um or, or, or here's a new scene for you emily kind of kind of thing yeah i feel you on that that's good that they were flexible with you and working with you that that mean they trust you as a director which is oh great. yeah cheers, cheers man yeah for sure for sure like i feel very blessed to have to have yeah i'm yeah i feel, I do feel very blessed to have to have the the cast that i have because they all of them were Amazing. Without them, this film would not be what it is. So, one hundred and ten percent. So, what inspired the backstory? Because when it came on and I was reading it, I was like, "Yeah, mm -hmm. like the just like the you know the I don't know if you want to tell. Matter of fact, it's your story. Yeah. I'll let you tell the backstory. But that like I'll. Oh, but yeah, yeah. Like about we mean about the, uh, the them being kids and being brought into the the government. Yeah, the, the, being, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, so so basically, we're trying to do a um, like a, like a short graphic novel series mm -hmm. um, about the ciphers, um, and that's so the ciphers. The, the idea of the ciphers came about after we filmed Project Summer, um, and then I was like, I really like this idea, you know. So Miles is just well, Miles and Bryce and those guys. They're they're just one aspect of what was before this pandemic. Um, yeah, so, so when I was when I was editing it, I was like, "This would be really cool if we could um, expand on on these mercenaries type of people." Mm -hmm. um, and then yeah, and I read the that little backstory for the beginning of the film. And a friend of mine, he does graphic, he does graphic design, and he does graphic novels and comics and stuff. And together we kind of 
was yeah we're still kind of plugging it away now to be to be honest with you like just kind of how we can make it stretch out beyond just being film but like into graphic novels but so that's why we kind of had that there as well so that we can maybe build upon it from a different front in the future i would i would absolutely love to see a, a project summer comic book comic line come out i actually oh. produced a comic book for like some of my mo- some of my short films too but like i would absolutely I love really- to see that yes i would absolutely oh, cool I would absolutely love to see a Project Summer uh, comic book series too, spin off, even a sequel. Oh, dude, yeah, yeah, I'd love that as well, man. Like, um, yeah, like the the, the the graphic novel is is, is more a hundred percent than the sequel. Okay. Um, but if, if people love the you know Project Summer, um, yeah, the guys are all happy to come to do some more. Um, yeah, to do some more. Yeah. For us, continue the story, you know. And um, they've really said that we had a screening two weeks ago, and they've all said they want to come back and do some more. Um, so yeah, we'd love to do. Con- yeah, we, we, yeah, we're going to see how it goes, you know. So see, see how it uh, unfolds over the next few months, and then assess. Now, congratulations on your screening. Before I want to, yeah, ask, thank you. I'm going to ask you. I want to ask you about the screening, but I want to ask you one more thing about the film. Uh, yeah. What made you want to break it up into parts? Um, that's a good question. I I quite like it when films are broken up into parts. Um, I can't because I yeah I think that's where products product summer comes from as well because it's also me as a director and filmmaker experimenting and I feel with the. Also, with the parts, the parts are called fragments. And at the beginning of the story, the fragments are what they put into the kids' heads to kind of tell a story or mm-hmm. to kind of make them believe a narrative. Um, so on the flip side, the audience are getting fed fragments to kind of believe what they're watching on the screen. Um, so that's why I decided to break it up. But, um, but also, I think it, it looks nice. <laughs> no, well, <laughs> it, yeah, really? it, it definitely played out nice and played out well. I liked it. I was wondering... Yeah. When I was watching, I was wondering, was it also to make it like a series? Like it could be split up into different episodes too. I wasn't sure. That's why I wanted to ask you that oh, too. That'd be nice. Yeah, I didn't think about that. Um, yeah, that'd be quite cool. That's quite quite cool actually. I like that. No, that I yeah. like what you. I like the way that was executed. I, I like the way you did that. That was that was great. Now, oh, yeah. Uh, now the premiere, the the premiere that you did. Like, where did you do that at, and how did you set that up? Oh, uh, cool. Yeah. So th- that actually wasn't the premiere. That was that was more that was just for the cast and crew and a few people to kind of just watch the film. Okay. Um the prem the actual premiere we'll be having at the end of September. Um but yeah, the, the it, uh so we was quite lucky in the the, the character to so the actress who plays um Anna, okay. uh, Laura Abaleas, she she has a con she had a contact has a contact, sorry, um with a small cinema um in central london or near central london um so she set that up for us okay. um and that went yeah that went really smooth and really well um good reviews and stuff and but yeah the actual premiere will be in september um in a bigger complex um and that yeah just been hiring you just hire the cinema and then um you do the whole marketing stuff which is uh soul destroying soul destroying but you yeah you know you need to do your whole marketing and advertising and then um yeah you, you kind of celebrate when you know you see that you sold out and then you, you get drunk and that's that's it <laughs> yeah and do it all over again exactly going over. <laughs> so um madison i would i i the hair the passion that you have for madison hopefully we will mm. get to see that come i would like to see that come out yeah, cheers, dude. Yeah, yeah, I'd love to. I'd love to see that as well. Um, but it's interesting doing Product Summer. I, I think Madison deserves like a much bigger budget. Much bigger. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, but it, it, it's something that I will, you know, I, I want to see come to life, either by myself or someone else. But um, yeah, like the script is too. Good. Not being arrogant, but like yeah, not being arrogant at all. But the the scripts for me, they're for me and these guys who are poor, they loved it. So it was too good to kind of just let it die. Um, so it's something that we will, yeah, we will definitely make it happen. But, um, yeah, we still got a lot of work to do post Project Summer. Um, and afterwards we will, okay. yeah, we'll go back to the drawing board and see what's going to happen. Now, 
Now, where can everybody check out Mad? I mean, uh, Project Summer, and what is the what is going to be the official re- release date? Cool. Um, official release date, I don't actually know. Um, but what we what we because I'm talking to quite a few people who want to take, put it onto mainstream platforms. Um, actually, after this interview, I got another one um, with someone who yeah, it's going to be good to put it onto like mainstream platforms like Tubi. Who I've never heard of that. But yeah, to be Amazon, um, Apple. Yeah. Uh, but by regards to me, um, it will definitely be on my website, which is theworldisyourstotaste.com, um, which will be coming up live next month. And you can purchase it from there um, for about eight pounds, I think. So maybe like ten dollars. Um, so it will be on, like, be online on VOD. But I'm talking to people in the US as well, maybe doing some streaming. Streaming, uh, doing some theatrical releases as well. Uh, but in terms of being when you can definitely see, I would say just just keep checking worldisyourstotaste.com, um, and it will be up like yeah in September or October. But if you follow, yeah, so that the website worldisyourstaste website, you'll you'll know you'll be kept up to date with, with when when the release date will be officially be announced. Okay. Okay, and thank. I, I'm glad that I had the pleasure of speaking with you. Do you want to shout anybody too. else? Yeah, your cast members, your crew. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Um, I, I, yeah, I'm gonna try to remember everyone, but obviously, if I forget everyone, um, anyone, I, I apologize. Uh, but yeah, I just want to say like a huge thank you to um, all the yeah, all the cast members. Um, so see, Abby, Emmy, Oni, Eid, um, Leona, Clark, Hannah, West, Emily, Alice, sister. Laura Abelayas, Nicholas Savadas, um, Eric Blau, Tobias Buck, uh, Romina Rabado, Yolanta Lukasic. Um, wow, I think I got everyone else good. Um, but yeah, <laughs> no, yeah, uh, no, yeah, seriously, without them, this film would not. Oh, sorry, uh, Anushka Fernandez, Ebony Oscan, um, Romina Rabado, if I've not said her already. Uh, yeah, like without them, this film would not be. Uh, what it is so yeah thank you and thank you guys anyone who picks it up you know anyone who who purchases it from the website or goes to the screenings you know all the all the money that you give goes to the next project um which is gonna i think we start pre-production next year so uh early next year um so i'm um, yeah so yeah just enjoy it um support not just my film but everyone's film on the independent circuit and um Together, hopefully, we can bring some new ideas to Hollywood because I think they're kind of lacking at the moment. Yes, they are, Andre. Yes, they are. And thank you. For, yeah. Thank you for coming on. I definitely would love to interview you again after you do your premiere, just to, okay. to see how you feel about everything, like the reactions and you know that experience that you have. So definitely, oh, for sure. Stay in contact, okay. and I appreciate you. Thank you again, and keep keep creating no matter what. Keep on going. Good here. Thank you very much. Thank you for for uh, inviting me, and we'll definitely um, talk very very soon. Um, yeah, it would be nice to talk to you, mate. Thank you very much.